I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Out in the wave, she's the queen of the hunt. Quick ray, our top, she pulls off any stunt. Swift like the wind, fierce is the tide. Small is the ship, where adventure resides. Oh, sail the sea, brave and bold. It's morning where stories of that are told. Dash through the waves, fearless and grand. She's pride of the navy, the power of the land. Hey team, this is Rip here. If you guys are doing fantastic today, you got a really fun and maybe somewhat aggravating video, but I just wanted to get out there about really, uh, do battleships really have the power to dictate what destroyers do and vice versa? And of course, it's just a friendly conversation, having fun, but something to point out as well. But man, it just, uh, just sometimes it gets under your skin, right? But as always, have thick skin. But before we begin, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support in the channel. If you see value in what we're doing here, let us know. Leave a comment. And as always, we're trying to get better. As We don't know everything. We're always here to bring discussion forward, have a good time, and uh, just make good friends at the same time, and be respectful of each other, building a good community, okay? So let's get right to it. We are in Tier 10 Smolin, and then uh, Smolin. And uh, actually, the next video, we'll have... Uh, a video about Gdansk and actually I really do before we begin talk about the um, you know caveat this is an arms race so it's not realistic but man you're getting down to we're going to see later in the video one second reloads but we're going to talk about some of the destroyers I really really do enjoy uh, tier 10 um, and small one of course is uh, definitely overpowered uh, one of the most powerful destroyers in the game but also it is not not available anymore but wish they would bring it back but a lot of people complain about that and RPF is indicating okay let's be a good destroyer player what's the first priority eliminate the destroyers if we can also uh, cap points at the same time but look at the reloads on this bad boy right here 1.2 seconds on a shimikaze player and you guys know about me i do not like shimikazes or shimikaze players at all they only have one type of gameplay which is just stay silent and uh you know torque from distance or whatever but oh, sometimes they do some uh, uh shimikaze players want to do fire want to fire back unfortunately when you're going against a small and that's what's going to result right there splash one going down right off the bat that's one of many kills today and look we're risking our ship right now but you know what i'm willing to do it because why I know I'm going to get a heal buff later on the road. Look at all that fire, incoming fire. You're going to notice how much fire we take as a destroyer player. Look at that. Venezia is firing at us right now. We've also, you know, literally uh, had to really use engine boost to get back and forth. Throttle juke to just get out of harm's way. And you can see all the fi incoming fire right there. And look, we're already up to, to 436,000 potential damage right there. And that, like I said, one of the good aspects of being a destroyer player is to distract incoming fire. Because fire on you means less fire on your friendly teammates. So we've already done our job right there. And this is course objectives is really um, not pre prevalent uh, initially in arms race. You're just going out there getting the heal buffs and everything like that. Kind of like an arcade kind of game. But really, you're going out there spotting, killing destroyers, torping, uh, capturing these uh, little buffs to help your team out in the long run. And that's what your job is as a good destroyer player, especially in the small end. So... We'll talk about why I like the European Destroyer so much because you got the radar package, you got gun power. You're going to see later on in the Gdansk video radar power, gun power, everything that you ever wanted. And we got torpedo power as well. Again, you, you, that is one of the roles you have as a good destroyer player. Now, I don't understand this Columbo. Now, if you can take a look at it, uh, you're, throughout this video, you're going to notice this Columbo player, not to say anything bad about you, but it really, you know, just saying I'm doing something really good. Like I'm in the back uh, somehow not doing my job, but, you know, what, what did I just do initially? I went out there, destroyed the first kill you know, first blood there. And I don't know why most people are saying well done to me or complaining. So I'm not really sure if that was a sarcastic uh, thing to say, but whatever. This is the title of the video was do not listen to battleship players as a destroyer. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you are a destroyer player. You are the leader. You are the one going out there and setting the tempo, the pace and everything. Because once you go down, like I've always said, most likely your flank will fold. And that's where people always complain. Why aren't you doing your job as a good destroyer player? You know, like I said, submarines have tried to do the destroyer role, not as effectively. Carriers can't really cap points or objectives. They just sit in the back and fly planes around. I've, last time I ever heard, airplanes don't capture points, right? So anyways, let's get right to it. Uh, continuing on being a good destroyer player and talking about the, the tier 10 small end. If you don't know what it is, it was pre a premium ship given away for free XP. It's not available anymore. It's got radar, heals, and uh, engine boost. Things that I really love in any kind of gunboat DD main uh, destroyer play. 
and that's definitely required especially even having torpedoes and the small one actually has decent aa for what it can do again i've always said aa is trash yeah but it's it's better than nothing right so if you, i think small and holland are some of the best destroyers with the best you know the european line has some great aa and i really enjoyed ragnar small and holland that they, they rank in the top for the any aircraft for what it's worth right but i'd rather have this than i would say something like a shimikaze right Anyways, we got the gunpowder 1.2 second reload. You're gonna see as we get the more and more buffs that you see at the top here, this buff right here increases reload speed or decreases reload speed. Uh, so basically a better rate of fire. And it's so, so powerful. We got destroyers, the RPF locating right here. I'm just gonna send preemptor torpedoes in that direction, hopefully hit something for free. And of course we got the engine boost that really speeds up the small end and you can throttle juke back and forth or even just get out of dodge really quickly. I love it. The heels and of course radar when you get detected, either wait for the thing to go into smoke or just pop radar to reveal. Notice I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a destroyer player. I'm capping these uh, buffs. Oh, I got spotted. So something's out here, pop the radar and boom, right there. This is why I don't like the Jaeger. You, ha you don't have any guns, no defensive capabilities other than just get the hell out of the area and just stay away from the threat. And Jaeger can't spot me. I still got the radar, and I'm pumping so many shells. And like I said, I've tried. I'll do a review on the the Jaeger. I got. I just got it. And I honestly, I'm like, like I said, a lot of people hate me for this, but I'm just saying my, my opinion. Again, you have your opinion. I have my opinion. Totally awesome. I love your opinions about Jaeger. I've heard some great stories. For me, it just doesn't work as a gunbow DD main. Um, it's good for torpedoes in a sense, but then again, I like to play the Holland more because when I get spotted, at least I got gun power and AA power. Jaeger doesn't have really much of it. It's, again, it's like Shimakaze gameplay where. You're just being quiet. You got the best detection in the game, and you really just go around there and torp people. That is not kind of my my play style. Again, if it's your play style, good on you. I'd love to hear more stories about it. Just giving you my thoughts and my opinions, and you're you are more than welcome to share yours. And I love the discussion about it. You know, I just don't uh, seem to <laughs> I can't figure out Jaeger very well because I'm not I don't see the impact that I can do. You know, running around being quiet and not using guns or anything and just using torpedoes that have still got a minute reload. I mean, a minute reload is still a minute reload. As opposed to consistent guns and so forth, you're going to see later on the amount of firepower this small one can dish out that I really do enjoy the gun power uh, aspect of role of the destroyer because it really does come down sometimes to you just overwhelming the enemy with sheer fire and gun power. And that's exactly why I like the consistency of it. Reload. Even the torpedoes look on this. I still got to wait a minute and change. So... Like I said, torpedo, and again, with the introduction of hydro and uh, other destroyers and submarines out there spotting the torpedoes, it somewhat is becoming difficult to actually land some of these torpedoes. Even the Jaeger, I was struggling with uh, some of the torpedo hits. You got to get real up close and personal, and then you're running susceptible to radar, hydro, uh, airplanes, and so forth. We're going to try to eliminate the Venezia. He's only, ooh, he's healing, so let's see if we can get a kill out of this thing. And again, I elected to shoot because I thought I could kill this guy, but ooh, Colombo gets that shot right there. Good job on that battleship for shooting. Again, I didn't say a word to him. He can do whatever he wants, okay? You do your battleship thing, and here we go. We're going to do our destroyer thing. We're going to continuously fire and get fires on any battleship. Look at the reload. One second reload, baby. One second reload on the small one. Look at the amount of firepower this thing can dish out, and look how long the Montana has to wait to reload. Meanwhile, we're taking 1,300 damage off him every couple seconds here, and this is incredible, and I love just the fact that this thing can just dish out so much hate, and again, I, I also like the engine boost right there. Engine boost active right now. It's pumping me up to about 42 47 knots definitely very good at dodging shells and juking out of, and just getting out of dodge in general so i do enjoy that aspect of it. it's kind of like the ragnar gameplay maybe a little bit borderline for uh, gadance but gadance is too easy to hit but look at that reload speed down to 0.8 seconds guys this is awesome love the fact that this thing can dish out so much hate in such a short time and uh, we got adrenaline rush kicking in we got fearless brawler kicking in we got the buffs i mean this is ridiculous almost 0.8 second reload so i do that enjoy the aspects of that no destroyer will ever mess with the small line at, with the 0.8 second reload it's ridiculous you're talking even faster almost fast guns as the sherman and the, the f4 sherman is very powerful look at the colombo telling me get, providing cover for small i don't know what he's telling me to do i, I what, what what more do you want look, look where all the battleships are at gascon Colombo, you guys have no right to tell what a, a destroyer is supposed to do. Meanwhile, the destroyer, me, uh, is actually in capping the spot for your team, spotting for your team, doing everything for the team. No battleship on Earth has the right to say, uh, tell us what to do. When you can just sit back, you don't even have to touch your mouse and everything. You can sit there typing on the keyboard like a keyboard warrior, right? So I, I don't appreciate that. Like I said, 
if you have, are not contributing to the fight, you have no right to actually say what to do, especially when you have gunboat destroyers and destroyer players that are actually seasoned in the game that actually see watch these videos, watch a lot of videos, study out there, and learn the TTPs to actually get things done. And unless you provide something to aid in the battle, then I would encourage you not to say anything that really de detriments the aspect of the ship. Remember, the destroyer is risking the ship more than the battleship player, as you can see, sitting in the back, hiding away and doing whatnot. So again, uh, you're getting shot at, great, but that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to get shot at, while the destroyer players out there are supposed to be either undetected, detected, spot, cap, radar, torp, gunpoat, everything, destroy, destroy, destroy at the center of the map. That's why I like gunplay, uh, destroy gunplay so much. It's it's so much more effective. Okay, I got the RPF located in front. I know he spotted, pop the radar, boom, right off the bat, and right there, go, look at it. Okay, but first of all, before I begin, we're this engagement right there. Columbo over here saying, are you playing a Holland? What does that necessarily mean? Uh, am I playing a Holland? I'm playing a destroyer. Am I playing in the style of Holland where I just run on the back and just torpedo and do nothing? I, I don't know what he's trying to get at that. But either way, I'm not going to listen. Actually, one of the lessons I've learned is just avoid chat. If you like to, silence the chat and don't even read it. But for me, I need, I need to be in communication with my team. I believe communication is important, but effective communication, clear, concise, and correct. Always teaching my students that, hey, look, you want to have that effective communication to build CRM, crew resource management. And it's, again, working as a team to get to a logical conclusion is really great. So what am I doing? I'm, I still keep chat up to, to talk. Hey, I'm going to go and, and, and uh, engage the destroyer that I know is coming and I have radar, boom, as soon as I get spotted, I'm going to pop the radar. He, I, he probably doesn't know. I don't blame him. He probably doesn't know what kind of system I have set up. I've got RPF. I've got radar. I know exactly where this is. I'm dictating where this engagement is going to go before I even start. So look, as soon as Jaeger is spotted, boom, 0.9 second reload, what's he going to do? This is why Jaeger sucks. The guns turn slow. They reload slow. All he has to do is rely on his teammates, and boom, he goes down splash two. Just taking the destroyer off the team, off the map for my teammates. Look, I already eliminated the Shemikaze. I've already eliminated the, the Jaeger. I've eliminated all the destroyers. And what more do you want? And thank God the submarine actually talked to me and says, nice job, small end. Hey, thank you very much for actually complimenting your teammates for doing the job well done. And I encourage that more. If you see your teammate do something good, reward them for it. Either um, report, um, what is it called? Not report. Um, compliment compliment plus one hey you did a great job and say it in the chat if you have time for do that um especially the battleship players are sitting in the back that are just you know you can wait for your long reloads and you can actually have a keyboard and type and have conversations and everything while meanwhile as a short player my hands are constantly on the keyboard going back forth left right speed up speed down juke throttle uh, heels, engine boost, uh, radar. I have to keep myself continuously head on a swivel, keeping on moving. And again, I think that's why the destroyer role is so important. Again, it is also being very, very engaging and you're always working the throttles. You're always working the map. You're always looking around. You're always analyzing the situation. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, it's, yeah, that's why I like the destroyer play so much. You're so deeply involved. Right now, we are noticing the flank is collapsing on the wet side here. So I got to eliminate these two destroyers before I continue capping. Notice that the cap is being held. So what am I supposed to do as a destroyer player? I'm a quick reaction force. We uh, figure out which who is the one that's most likely to die first. And we're going to take the Schlieffen because he's getting focus fired. We're looking at our Minotaur. Is he about to die? Yep, he's about to die if he gets shot one more time. So we're going to go ahead and start putting fire down on the Schlieffen. We Lotus on our right here. Hindenburg is in range to shoot us. So we got to do this really quick. Look at the reloads right here, 0.9 second reloads here, and we're gonna see if we can get a fire, help this the Minotaur out as much as we can, and boom, there he goes. Splash three, 78,000 damage right here. Now we're gonna go on the Veneto. Notice the exclamation part is blinking like crazy. It means we're getting shot at by the Hindenburg, but we don't have time to think about that right now. We need to start as many fires as we can on Veneto. There's two fires right there. Let's see if we can get another one. He damages, uh, damage cons, and there, yep, Hindenburg is still looking at us. Ooh, we got fired. Veneto shoots sap right there, slam on the brakes, hard left turn, and we at least mitigate as much damage as we can there. Look at the reloads. Oh, crap, we got a torpedo. We got engine boost on. Go full forward. Hopefully, it doesn't hit us. Doesn't hit us. And okay, thank God it dies right before our ship. And look at the amount of firepower dish in the down of the Veneto right there. Let's see if we can nail this guy and get him out of the game. And boom, splash four. Look at that. Four kills. 102,000 damage. Not only are we taking battleships out, we're taking the cruisers. I'm sorry, destroyers out. And now it is all that's left is to mop up the rest of the team. They way to go right there, Ohio. And uh, that's pretty much the game right there. Four kills in the small end. I definitely wanted to get this cracking, uh, but unfortunately, we are unable to get it. Again, 
Who's dictating the game right there? If I had died, would my team have survived that? I really highly doubt it, especially knowing where my position on my team is. They were pushing heavily down the middle there. They were also flanking my team. So I really don't know if they would have made it had I died. So look at it right here. We're going to see if we can get engaged at Hindenburg. Unfortunately, we don't get this Kraken because the shells take too long. And the, um, the Gascon gets the Hindenburg kill. Way to go right there, team Gascon, uh, for uh, doing your job right there. And uh, that seals the game. As always, that is the first video. Um, the bill will be at the end of the video, so I'll take a look at it. But we're going to move on to the Gdansk video that's coming up next. If you want to look at the stats, I'll keep, I'll keep it up here right now. Just initially for your 102,000 damage, four kills, a lot of fires. Did our part right there. Dreadnought, and that means we're surviving, right? First blood, of course, got the first blood of the team. And guess what? We're number one on the team again as a destroyer player. Why? Because we did our job. We did so many things. And this, if you want to be a good destroyer player, do a lot of things that actually for team play. Remember, this is a team play game, right? You work as a team, uh, not boss your team around. So you work together. 102,000 damage, a lot of fires, and uh, we got one torpedo hit, I believe. Spotting damage. That is very good. Look, look how many guys we spotted right there to help assist our team out. Potential damage. This is the amount of ammunition fired at you you have i told you if you're up at the million um uh, mark you are an annoying ship we spotted ships we torpedo spotted for teams so they don't get hit by torpedoes we capped we stopped the cap from uh, going up from the enemy team and look we how many destroyers did we eliminate one two two of the oh, there's only two in the game we eliminated both of them ourselves that is how you win games right there and of course we also eliminate battleships when you have destroyers eliminating battleships you've got a strong destroyer player right there so uh, let's take a look at the gdansk and uh, see how that actually uh, turned out as well all right, we're back with the uh, the Gdansk right here. And take a look at that first good destroyer player technique is to look at the lineup before you start the game to figure out what are your threats. First threat to me is the Wooster and Minotaur with 10-kilometer radar. I believe the Wooster only has 9-kilometer radar. Yeah, 9 kilometers. So we have a 9 kilometer and a 10 kilometer radar potentially there. And the Shimakaze gear in Sherman Holland. We're wor more, more worried about the Sherman right here who can do pump a lot of firepower in this and that. And of course, the battleships are there. That is what you do as a good destroyer player. You want to actually look at what your team lineup or the enemy team lineup is so you can uh, really beware as to see you know, what is potentially on your side that do you want to be pushing aggressive or do you not want to push aggressive? Can you win this battle? Um, do you want to engage or do you want to play more of a standoff role? Lately, I've noticed that I like the standoff role more where I'm not rushing into a cap and waiting for my death. And I'm also liking this new technique where I'm actually finding a destroyer and just keeping them alive. Like I said, what is my rule? I've always said, you keep your destroyer players alive, even if you're a destroyer yourself. If you keep your friendly destroyer like this Gassard in front of me, if I can keep him alive majority of the round, I have a higher chance of winning than the other side of the, the other team as well that loses their destroyer. So I elected to go, you know what? Let me go ahead and help my destroyer out. Now, here's their destroyer. Okay, let's see here. Lot, the reason I like Gdansk, Gdansk is so awesome because it's overpowered with the radar smoke combo. Okay, now look, Sherman is going to smoke up. I wait. I wait until he goes undetected. He's slowing down. He's going to go into smoke. Okay, undetected, pop the radar. 12 seconds to shoot this guy for free. So look at that, just shooting at him, nobody's shooting at us. We're just gonna plow as many shells as we can. Look, just doing a quick uh, surrounds check, make sure no torpedoes on our way, and just look at the firepower that we, we get a torpedo, and boom, gearing goes down, first kill, and there goes the Sherman, two destroyers right off the bat, devastating survive, first blood on the gearing, and now the Sherman goes down, now we have eliminated all destroyers on this side of the map at Charlie, it is a nice free clear hunting day for our battleships and cruisers, and now they have nothing to worry about. I feel so much more comfortable if I was a battleship and cruiser player, knowing that I had a Gdansk and Gassard that eliminated all the destroyers, and now you can just literally go around at for free and just shoot at whatever you want to do. So right now, another thing I like about the European destroyer line, look at what we're doing with Gdansk, Ragnar, Small and everybody, all these European destroyers have the ability to really just farm. Farming from literally distance and just starting as many fires as you can. Holland even can do it as well. If you get close enough and personal, they start a lot. The guns start a lot, a lot of fires. You saw small in the previous video starting a lot, a lot of fires. You got Ragnar, which is firing from distance using Wooster guns, by the way, mind you, and start a lot of fires. And of course, the Gdansk has smaller caliber guns, but it's like a Mogador on steroids that literally gets the the reload rates of a Mogador constantly, which I really, really do enjoy. And I like starting a lot of fires. You also get the addition of torpedoes, as you can see, launching right there. Ten torpedoes going out to only 10 kilometers but are good enough for a defensive measure we're going to go ahead and pop fire right here and just start firing from concealment smoke and we've got a nine kilometer radar which is also awesome very overpowered but it only lasts about 12 seconds if you want to build for it and you can radar from smoke which is that you know uss black combo where everybody calls that overpowered where you have a destroyer shooting from smoke in radar that can uh, literally just fire undetected for free and it's really hell on earth for other destroyers
Destroyer players. So right there, defensive torpedoes are just, that, like I said, those are to steer the um, Schlieffen to where we want them. And that's what we did. We get a free hit. So be it. Hey, those torpedoes took out the gearing. Why not? We'll take that. So we're firing from the concealment of smoke right here. And it's pretty awesome. Nevsky also coming in to support. Yeah, I think he's getting shot. Look at all the smoke clouds being puffed off his ship. Yeah, he's getting hit by a lot, a lot of secondary. So he used this opportunity to get into cover. And that's what we're doing as a destroyer player. We're providing smoke that helps out your teammates all very, very well so that they survive the long haul. And uh, we can keep majority of our teammates alive. And, and anything we can do to help spot, cap, smoke, radar, gunboat just literally just spam he all day long so it really takes the the pressure off our friendly team it makes a good destroyer player so again you're contributing so many aspects of the destroyer role and that's why i like gdansk and smallin and holland and ragnar so much i mean they just fulfill a lot of roles that i do enjoy and let me know your take on do you like the european line destroyers they're really awesome or are they really sucky so anyways we're finding from distance right here you notice our guns go out to 14.4 for what we build and it is annoying. I'm telling you, you should have a good dance, literally just spamming you from 14 kilometers. Uh, that is incredible right now. We start another fire right there. We've already up to four fires right now. Let's see if we can eliminate the Schlieffen. And boom, Schlieffen goes down. Splash two. And that is how we eliminate the entire flank at Charlie. And that is devastating for a team. Notice, look, this is why battleship players do not get to dictate what to do. Bungo's in the back. Montana's in reverse. Look at enemy team. Vermont's back here. Kremlin and Alsace I'll talk, all hiding behind the island. How are you going to help your teammates out? The no, no battleship over here is supporting Charlie or Bravo. So again, nobody can dictate what you can do as a, as a destroyer player. Remember, don't let a, um, a battleship or big uh, big ship player tell you what to do to lose or risk your ship. Remember, you are the most important aspect of the game. As many people have said, destroyers are really, I mean, because if you don't do your job, you get yelled at. If you do your job, you get yelled at because you didn't do it the right way. Whatever. But the destroyer player is so crucial, like I said, because you're out there spotting for everybody. If you can't see the target, you can't shoot and hit it, right? So that's why battleships complain all the time because there's no destroyer spotting the target for them to shoot because they need to see the enemy before they shoot. Notice the amount of firepower we're shooting here on the Minotaur. Very, very awesome right here. We want to eliminate him and boom, there it is. Splash three. That was a steal kill right there. But anyway, we'll take it. Amount of firepower addition out from the Gdansk and in staying within outside the range of a 10 kilometer minotaur radar firing from distance very very good tactic skill no need to push and risk your ship if you don't have to that's exactly why i don't listen to other cruiser or battleship players you want to silence the chat go ahead but again you have to make sure that you survive to keep the battleship and cruiser player alive and to keep them happy because why you got to go out there and spot for them you got to go out and, and, and cap the spots for them you have to go out there and spot the destroyers for them you're doing everything for them and again i don't think they appreciate a lot of that and i'm not saying all players but i'm saying majority and that's why you don't have the right to tell what a destroyer player should be doing because they're doing the best they can to survive they're doing the best they can to support you guys okay and again it's all about support do it in a friendly way and uh you know work your way to the get the enemy now the thing i like about the um the uh, gdansk is that back turret you see right here number three number three turret right here is 360 so no matter which way you turn they're always facing forward i do like that the back turret gun only single barrel that is instead of the mogadors too a single barrel turns very, very slow and very bad angles as well that's the only thing i don't like about the gdansk wish it was like a mogador style if you're gonna make a mogador make it like a mogador right anyways uh, firing Montana from distance right here. We got engine boost if we need to, so we can pop. Oh my gosh, we got a Wooster here. Now this is where a teamwork comes in handy here. You need to have your players support your destroyer player. Notice the Wooster is firing full broadside at me, and he is like more than just giving himself up right there. See, we're distracting him so he can take shots. Whoever's firing right there, the Nevsky, way to go right there, supporting your destroyer player. Blast this Wooster out of existence. Battleship players or cruiser players, you see your short in trouble with a broadside light cruiser, take him out do the best you can okay and that's exactly why it's so so important um, that you just maintain situational awareness and protect your destroyer okay because it's going to save you look at that he we provided spotting so the bungo could shoot the wooster from downtown now what's the next priority montana burning down blowing this thing up and we are literally just melting away everybody again this is battleship gameplay my other my next video is literally the battleship's obsolete aspect of it because what can a battleship player do at this point nothing but just run away instead of pushing in well if you're going to die anyways why wouldn't you consider continue pushing in or you're just going to run away and just run away tired and, uh, and dead that's what i've always said i've heard people the snipers always say don't uh, bother running you'll just die tired um i believe in, even my squadron has done that as well we, we always have a, an emblem that says hey don't bother running you'll just die tired uh, essentially yeah i mean we own the air 
And uh, if you're just gonna, you know, try to run, we're gonna see you from miles away anyway. It doesn't matter. So, anyways, look at that. Look at the game. Look at where this game is going. All caps. All points are capped. The destroyer gameplay is non-existent. Battleship player in the back. Two battleships over here, hiding behind an island, hoping for what? I don't know. Uh, waiting for pizza delivery. Whatever. Holland goes down, and that is how the game ends right there. But look at look at the amount of damage we did initially. 132,000 damage, three kills right there. Devastating and first blood on that gearing, and just completely wiped out. And this is why we have so many blowouts right here. Again, I think it's because they need to introduce something that's more survival for battleships and cruisers to want to push up, like the Libertard. And that Libertard is exactly the reason and evidence as to why I think Wargaming is trying to aggress is that battleship play is dead. You can't push in without dying. And it makes not an enjoyable game. You know, I think they should take a lesson from out of the new operations of Tier 10 where the actual bots actually have like triple the health now. I think I ran into a Hanover that had almost 180,000 HP. I think that's probably the way the game has to go. You just got to inflate the HP points because there's there's too many powerful ships out there like Gdansk or Ragnar or whatever, or Jacksonville now, that can just dish out so much HE and damage that... They're just melting ships, and that doesn't encourage uh, the kind of gameplay that Wargaming is trying to include here, which is capping points. Capping points and objectives means you actually have to go in and force yourself into engage. Now, without those points, I agree, most people won't want to push. They'll just want to stay in the back and just shoot artillery-style gameplay. That doesn't make for fun either, so I think Wargaming has a dilemma. They actually need to come up with some other form of engaging gameplay that not only satisfies the idea of players coming together to engage in battle but then again not melt right off the first 10 seconds so it, it's a very unique uh, chess game where it's almost like in chess if the player doesn't even show up they just go to the back of the map there's no game and right now we pop radar to spot the shimikaze oh, shimikaze players as always anyways um that's my thoughts on the video let me know what your thoughts are is battleship gameplay dead do battleships and cruisers dictate what uh, destroyers do or vice versa or should destroyers be the one leading from the front and dictate what everyone else should be doing to support the gameplay or should they just change change the gameplay altogether i just think that this might be uh, dying a dying uh, mode that uh, we keep playing over and over again and it's just not um, you know sort of living up to the times Right off the bat right here, Confederate. Six more ships damage, 20%. Devastating strike and first blood on the uh, gearing right there. Three kills, a lot of fire. Six fires, 133,000 damage. And how did we do in the team? Yeah, guess what? Number one, because guess what? We did a majority of the work. Again, you don't have to shoot a lot to get the number one in the team. Notice that you're doing a lot of spotting damage, potential damage, almost one million potential there. Annoying ship. Uh, spotting ships, capping points. I didn't cap any points. I believe someone beat me to the punch. And look at the amount of damage we're doing. Again, you don't have to necessarily throw out as much damage, but you can still serve a role as a destroyer, good destroyer player. Notice that we were we eliminated the gearing right off the bat. We we helped kill the Sherman, helped kill the Wooster, took out another Minotaur and a, the two battleships. So we did a lot of work right there. But as always, hope you guys see value in the channel. You like we did. Let me know what your thoughts. Do you think uh, you know uh, some of the things I was talking about was wrong and we can maybe think of a different way because I'd love to hear it because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at it in a different way and we just need to see a different perspective. As always, hope you guys see value in the channel. Like, subscribe, button below. The builds will be at the end of the video for Gdansk and Smolin. And again, as always, you see me out there, say hi. You guys stay safe. We'll talk soon. Cheers.